And before we all mute, before we all mute, I would like you to unmute because we have an overdue birthday song to sing. <laughs> Linda was elsewhere last time. Linda Hart was elsewhere last time we were on Zoom. And we have decided that we just can't sing. And so we're not gonna sing in person our happy birthdays. So all our happy birthdays are gonna have to fall on Zoom because it's just so fun to hear us all sing together. <laughs> so, <laughs> we've got um linda's was last month but uh we want to sing her happy birthday so start singing when you feel the spirit lead oh, good. linda hart <laughs> Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Everybody should have a Zoom birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> We're muted now, right? No. Now we can, if you would go ahead and uh, hit your mute button. So glad to see all of you here this morning, see and hear you sing. Uh, we want to welcome our special guest speaker this morning is Tom Hostetler. Uh, some of you may know him from living at Hillcrest, or even if you don't live at Hillcrest, you may know him. We always enjoy having him come speak. And uh, while Pastor Ron is out of town at, I believe, his brother's wedding or his sister's wedding, I'm glad that Tom could uh, come in and, and uh, step in. We'll start our morning service with our opening prayer. And Janet has that. You would bow your heads with me. Oh, loving God, we gather as pilgrims on a journey of faith. We come seeking the cloud of your presence as we travel the way. We come seeking your pillar of fire to light our darkness. Shine in our hearts, oh God, with the light of your love. Make your presence known through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Now our opening song, uh, as I found this prayer that said shine in our hearts, it made me uh, miss the times that our prayer, that our praise group would sing. And so I started looking through some of our praise songs to find one that Cody could play for us. And so let's enjoy uh, Shine, Jesus Shine. Set us free by the truth. 
Oh, I miss my tambourine. I look forward to being able to sing in, sing in person again. Now is the time when we can come together and share with each other things on our hearts, our joys and our concerns that we can hold you in prayer this week and rejoice with you for things that you'd like to celebrate about. So I open it up to anybody that has anything to share. I've got a couple of joys from this past week that a week ago, George and Richard and some of my friends helped me move into my new apartment. I'm in Pomona now on Third Street. And then as soon as I left the house, Rosanna, my sister, and her husband, Tim, they came by and they spent a hard week really clearing out the house. So it's much closer to being put up for sale. And they spent a little time helping me get settled into my apartment as well. So it's been a big week for me. Be sure and send us your new address so I can put it in the banner. Okay. I'll make sure I do. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, Frank is starting his hyperbaric treatments on Friday, and he'll have 20 of those to start out with. Uh, so it's going to be a commute to Arcadia and back every day. That's for his ankle, right? That's for his ankle wound that won't heal. Yeah. It's been uh, since October. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I'd like to ask a continued blessing from the church for my good friend Cliff Lee in Queens, New York. I know him for almost 50 years. He recently had open heart surgery, valve replacement, came through that okay. And unfortunately, he had some issues with continued use of a catheter and developed sepsis, which is very serious, as you know. It's amazing. I've known people that didn't make it through sepsis, but he was in ICU for about four or five days, and he's, he's good now. He just has to learn how to deal with the realities of getting old, I guess. So your prayers would be appreciated. Um, I got a call text from my mother. Uh, she and my dad are on their way to Montana from uh, Portland where they had a wonderful visit with Rochelle. I also got a text last night from Pastor Lauren with pictures of her Jason and Leo that she would like me to share with you all. So I'm going to share the pictures of baby Leo and his family. <laughs> He's whistling. Yeah. And then bird. And then let's go back. And then there's this Oh, nice picture. Oh, cute. Yeah. yeah, so that would be um, <laughs> the text I got from Pastor Lauren. Thanks, Laura. You're welcome. You know, I'm sure that they probably watched the recorded um, of, our, of our get together. And I, I just want them to um, from all of us that they are so close to our hearts and we just just think of them each day and ask God's blessing on them. Definitely. And I just want to thank all of you, excuse me. You got it, you're okay. For your prayers, <clears throat> prayers and good wishes. <clears throat> and just want to encourage everyone to continue um, following protocols for COVID. I, well, I don't know a story I can tell. Um, my granddaughter's father-in-law was celebrating his 20th birthday and he wanted all of his children there that day to help celebrate. So uh, they went, but um, one grandson, no, one son had a little bit of a sniffle and wasn't sure, uh, didn't think it was anything, but it turned out that he had COVID. His parents both have COVID. All of the 
his brother and sister and their family now have COVID. And he gave his wife, my granddaughter, COVID. So they all had to quarantine. So following protocols and monitoring your own health is very important. Nobody's really sick, but the, it's pretty inconvenient. And it isn't always light. So mm. pray for all of those people, but also continued prayers for my recovery. Thank you. And so I would just add on to that, Phyllis, as um, children go back to school, pray for that group, not only normal beginning of the school stuff, but all this COVID stuff. And, and people keep asking me what's going on. I said, we're going back as normal except for masks for now. <laughs> but we'll see. It could be different tomorrow. It could be different the next day. What are they going to do if we, you know, so, so pray for the health of all the people involved in schools, but also for the administration and the, that we keep being smart about what we're doing, but I don't know, finding that balance. I'd like to ask, um, I appreciate the prayers for the kids and I as we were traveling home from Tucson this past week. Um, Avery is recovering, um, but we in the process saw a new pediatrician who is concerned about her overall health. Um, she's very small for her age. And as a result, he wants to do some testing, some blood work, some x-rays, possibly seeing a geneticist. So we're facing some, um, I think what will be trying times for her, kind of scary for all of us. So um, prayers for her health are very much appreciated. All right. I'd like, I'd like prayers for my daughter, Jeanette, who's in the hospital right now. Mm -hmm. Wow, we have a lot, a lot on our plates today and a lot to think about. Um, would you go ahead and bow your heads with me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that each day that the sun shines or doesn't shine, that the sun rises, I guess, would be a better way to put that, that we have a new opportunity to choose how we're going to live life today. And we just thank you for each day and its newness and its uniqueness. There are so many things on our hearts and minds this morning, Lord. We're, we're thankful with Sander for help in moving. Um, we're thankful for Rosanna and Tim for coming on out and also helping with those kinds of things. We're thankful with Paul and Linda that they had such a great time with Rochelle and a good visit. We're thankful that Frank's friend Cliff is continuing to heal and we would pray for that continued healing. We're thankful for Phyllis and the healing she's experiencing and the help that she's getting in this transition time in her life. We ask that you Oh, and when we're thankful for the for Lauren and Jason and Leo and that just that new family and just be with them and bless them in this bonding time, God, and help them to feel our love and know that we are we are definitely rooting for them on this on this journey. Um, we also want to ask that you be with Frank as he begins his hyperbolic treatments. And 20 times all the way in and driving and everything else, but also just a really different process. And so we just ask that you would be with him and the doctors and that this would do what it's intended to do and that he would heal as he should heal. We ask that you would be with Jeanette, who is in the hospital and um, 
And again, every time it's the hospital, then it's not just the person, the patient who's there. We're praying for the doctors and the nurses and the staff and the family. It takes a whole lot of people to help somebody out. And also with Jess's daughter, Avery, we just ask that you would be with this new doctor and hope that, that maybe they saw something that they can help with and that, that the testing times won't be too trying on Avery or on her family. And that in the end, it'll be a positive. In the end, it'll be a, a, a good thing to either find out or find out that there's really nothing wrong. That's always a good thing too. Or find out that there's something that you know what it is and you can treat it. That's both of those would be great, great, great outcomes. We think about the kids going back to school, staffs going back to school, just all the people involved in that process. And that's always a crazy time, God. But then when you throw COVID on top of that, it makes it a really crazy time. And we just ask that you would be with and just give a blanket of protection to, to all those kids. They can't be vaccinated yet, God. And so we need to figure out how to help them be as safe as possible, but also get back to their typical lives and and what they what they need to do. Um, and not just for children and for schools, God, but all of us to continue. It's so hard. It's been so long. And you know, people are just saying, I'm over it. I don't want to do this anymore. And and just give us stamina to continue to follow protocols, to continue to be safe. There are so many people in the world that have been affected and continue to be affected by COVID. And I just ask that you would help people to make the best decisions possible to keep all of us safe and to be able to bring this to an end or at least a manageable place. I don't even know what the prayer is for sure, God, but, but you do. And so in all these things, God, we just, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your healing touch. We thank you that we can turn to you when we are in need. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time to be together. Please, please bless us as we gather in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Janet. And now Janet will continue. Um, we'll have our scripture reading. Uh, Laura can put the words up on our screens and Janet can read for us Philippians 2, 1 through 5. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Janet. And now we welcome our guest speaker to step up to the Zoom pulpit, so to speak. Welcome, Tom. Oh dear. Now, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, good. All right. It's a pleasure to see you all again. What a what a what a great uh, way to see all of these lovely faces. I look. I I've always looked forward to being with uh, with this group. Uh, you have had what a year you have had. 
lots of things going on in your congregation. And so this morning, as I hear about what's happening in individual lives, and I know that, uh, you know, corporately, you've, you've been, you've been going through a lot. And, um, and uh, so, and I'm, I'm aware that your pastor is away. I've been seeing some of the Facebook pictures that she's been posting and what a wonderful time in their lives and what a wonderful time for you to share all of that with them. It's, it's just wonderful. Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, I, I have a, a, a set of books on my bookshelf in my office that Myrna Wheeler, I see Julie here this morning, I, that Myrna Wheeler uh, left uh, when, she, uh, when she was chaplain at Hillcrest. And she, uh, it's the, these, um, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> I've forgotten the name of them. The something for the soul. What is that? Uh, no, chicken, I'm not, chicken soup. Chicken, chicken soup. soup. That's it. Chicken soup for the soul. Do you know about those? How many know about chicken soup for the soul? You've probably read many stories in there. And so, so one of those books that she left had this story in it. A blind boy sat on the steps of a building with a hat at, by his feet. He held up a sign which read, I am blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat, spare change from folks as they hurried past. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the hat. He then took the sign, turned it around, and wrote some words. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words. Soon the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign returned to see how things were. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. I wrote, today is a beautiful day but I cannot see it. Both signs spoke the truth, but the sign, the first sign simply said the boy was blind, while the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by how grateful they should be to see. He continues, when your life seems full of troubles, it seems difficult to maintain an attitude of gratitude, doesn't it? He says this, um, all we sometimes see are our problems like a blackened storm cloud casting a dark shadow over our lives. And the times when everything just seems to be going smoothly, we often take those precious moments for granted too, don't we? Caught up in the bliss, comfort, and familiarity of it all, we um, can simply forget to be thankful. So what, then, he writes, is gratitude? Simply put, gratitude is a habit. It's a way of looking at the world and all the good things in it with a feeling of appreciation, regardless of whether or not your current situation is to your liking. Gratitude is a heart-centered approach to being at peace with yourself and all you have. When you, when you practice this feeling of gratitude, it attracts even more things into your life for which to be great, grateful. I thought that was a good article. Helpful. Um, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then this story. Martin Rinkert was a minister in the little town of Eilenburg in Germany some 350 years ago. He was the son of a poor coppersmith but somehow he managed to work his way through an education. Finally, in the year 1617, he was offered a post of archdeacon in his hometown parish. A year later, what has come to be known as the Thirty Year War broke out. His town was caught right in the middle. In 1637, the massive plague that swept across the continent hit Eilenburg. People died at the rate, think of this, of 50 people a day in that little town. 
And the man called upon to bury most of them was Martin Rinkert. In all, over 8,000 people died, including Martin's own wife. His labors finally came to an end about 11 years later, just one year after the conclusion of the war. His ministry spanned 32 years, all but the first and the last, overwhelmed by a, the great conflict that engulfed his town and continent. It was tough for Martin Rinkert to be thankful, but he managed. Listen to what he wrote. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices. Thankfulness is not about what we have. It's an attitude. As we say, it's an attitude of gratitude, an attitude that we as believers should especially be familiar with. In the, the scripture from Colossians, Paul was exhorting his readers in a similar way. Um, to get back to the beginning, back to what they had learned, back to the path on which they had begun, and to stay on that path to the very end, to be rooted in Christ, built up in Christ, established in Christ, to the end. That's good advice for us uh, who are getting older <laughs> every day. Uh, now is not the time to give up on faith. We need it now more than ever. And, uh, and then with an almost throwaway line, Paul adds that as we continue our walk in Christ, we are to be, he says, overflowing with thanksgiving. Overflowing with thanksgiving. There are only two active verbs in those verses, two things that we are responsible for. The first is walking, that is to continue to follow Christ. And the second is that we are to be overflowing with, with thanksgiving, a life that is rooted in Christ and continually built up in Christ will naturally be filled with and overflowing of thankfulness. Isn't that a great phrase? Uh, it is, I think, a great phrase. But I, I'm not terribly convinced that it applies to too many people lately. In fact, uh, I don't know, maybe it's me, but uh, lately it seems like everybody's grumpy. Have you noticed that? I mean, you know, uh, last a couple of weeks ago, I was at uh, the pastors and spouses retreat that the district uh, offers, and we, there we were in Malibu, you know, at the Sarah Retreat Center. How many have ever been there? Been to the Sarah Retreat Center? I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful place. It's, uh, it's on a high hill that overlooks the ocean. Uh, you can look down and see Dick Van Dyke's place <laughs> right over the hill. And uh, there are just everywhere you look, beautiful flowers and hiking trails and birds singing. We went, uh, we went bird watching two of the days that we were there. It's great food, friendly staff, uh, uh, lots of free time to go to the beach and the pier and have some coffee and watch the surfers or anything you want to do. But you know, somehow, <laughs> when pastors get together, uh, it just seems like all they can ever do is complain. <laughs> and, you know, uh, like, ain't it awful? You know, here we are surrounded by all this beauty. We need to remind ourselves sometime that, uh, the, that the, the Bible says that God hates a complaining spirit uh, and holds us responsible for our complaining. So the key to remove that complaining is to remind ourselves, first of all, that God hears every word that we say, so we need to catch ourselves when we when we begin complaining and replace it with something else. Uh, look at Colossians 4, verse 2. Paul says that there is a connection between watchfulness 
and gratitude. Um, continue steadfastly in prayer, it says, being watchful in it uh, by with thanksgiving, or more literally being watchful in it by thanksgiving. The idea of watchfulness is, is vigilance and uh, alertness. You recall in the Garden of Gethsemane how Jesus admonished the sleepy disciples, uh, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. In other words, guard yourself from a temptation by watching in your prayer, being alert and vigilant. And now Colossians 4 verse 2 says the way we do that, the way we watch is with thanksgiving. So guard yourself with thanksgiving, gratitude. When Satan deploys his forces against the church, he instructs them not to focus their energies on prayerless believers, but on the saint who perseveres in prayer. Whenever you go on to your face before God in prayer, it is as though you put your knee into a bee's nest of evil. They swarm out around your head and they do all they can to divert your attention and dampen your zeal and discourage your heart and diminish your faith. And Paul tells us to watch out, not to give in, but to cover ourselves with a net that those bees can't get through. And he calls that net thanksgiving. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Guard yourself with gratitude. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will what? Will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4. The guardian role of gratitude applies not only to prayer and the spiritual battles that we fight there, but also to our interactions with people. We can see that in Ephesians 5, 4. Let there be no filthiness, no silly talk, no levity, which is not fitting, but instead let there be thanksgiving. And that's why gratitude... <laughs> is the guardian of our souls. It will come as no surprise to you that our culture does not encourage thankfulness. In fact, corporations spend billions of dollars every year to help you be discontent. <laughs> they want you to want what they're selling and they can't get you to do that unless you are not content with, with who you are. And uh, with, all of, with all that we have to be thankful for, how often are we content? In fact, most, most professing Christians don't even offer thanks over their meals, much less offer thanks over all that God does in their lives, including the tough stuff. We're much like that little boy who uh, was given an orange by a man, and the boy's mother said, what do you say to the man? And the little boy thought, handed the orange back and said, peel it. Yeah. I love the, the way that uh, Paul uses the word thankfulness so often in Colossians. And in chapter 4, verse 16, we're told to sing with thankfulness in our hearts to God. Uh, there is an interesting thing I learned as I examined the meaning of that word charis, uh, the Greek for thankfulness. The word can also be translated as grace. The King James Version, in fact, says it that way. We are to be singing with grace in our hearts. Gratitude is um, an attitude of grace. It means that we can see God's grace in all things, that we don't feel that God somehow owes us, that we don't earn what we get, but rather all that we have is by the grace of God. That makes us truly thankful, and that makes us 
gracious to other people as well. Those who are truly thankful are usually more giving and kinder to others. Fulton Ausler, a famous author many years ago, tells um, the story of his uh, African-American nurse, uh, Anna Marie Cecily Sophie Virginia Avalon Thessalonians. There's a name for you. <laughs> and, and writes this, she was present when his mother was born. She was there when Fulton Ausler was born. I remember her, he says, as she sat at the kitchen table in our house, the hard old hands folded across her starched apron, the glistening eyes lifted to the whitewashed ceiling and the husky old whispering voice saying, much obliged Lord for my vittles. And I asked, what's a vittle? It's what you got to eat and drink, that's vittles. But you'd, you'd get your vittles whether you thank the Lord or not, I said. Sure, she said, but it makes everything taste better to be thankful. Huh. After the meal, she thanked the Lord again and then said, you know, it's a funny thing about being thankful. It's a game an old preacher taught me to play. It's looking for things to be thankful for. Many of them pass you right by unless you go looking for them. Take this morning, I woke up and lay there wondering what I got to be thankful for now. And you know what? I couldn't think of anything to thank him for. But then from the kitchen comes the most delicious smell that ever tickled my nose, coffee. Much obliged, Lord, for the coffee. And much obliged, too, for the smell of it. Years passed, and Ausler grew up left home and learned some of the hard lessons of life. One day he was called to Anna's bedside. She was dying. Ausler noticed her old hands were twisted with pain. He wondered what she had to be thankful for now. Just then she opened her eyes, looked up at all the people around her bedside, closed her eyes again and said with a smile, much obliged Lord for such fine friends. May we see God's grace in our lives and may we be thankful even for the simple things with hearts filled with gratitude, amen? Let's pray. God, we thank you for all of the ways that you have shown your goodness to us when we awoke this morning, our feet hit the floor and we realized that you have given us another day of life. We thank you, O oh God, for the beauty of your creation, the wonder and the beauty of all that is around us. We bring before you all of our worries and stress, our weariness, our hopes and dreams. May our worship be a fragrant offering showing our trust in you. We know that you are present with us. We ask for your guidance and wisdom. We ask for your rest, your love. Be with us, be with all who are suffering, all who are joyful. Help us to know your forgiveness, your strength, your belief in us. Lord, we pray again for all of those persons whom we have named this morning and those who are on our hearts and minds. In the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom, so much. It's a really good, really good message that we can carry with us this week. And to help us remember and to help us carry that message in our head, Cody will play for it to
to remind us who the healer of our every ill is. Cody will play for us the song, Healer of Our Every Ill. Maybe that will help set that in your mind and you can sing that to yourself throughout the week to remind you who the healer of your ills are, who the healer of all our ills are in this time that we've really needed to rely on God and Jesus for healing. Cody? Live in peace and gratitude, and the God of love and peace will be with you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. So glad you could be with us this morning. My pleasure. And thank you, Cody, for continuing to be, to work on our music and to make sure that we still have uh, good music. It was, it's nice to hear those pieces that uh, have familiar, that I can hear familiar voices singing. And um, glad to everybody that has participated in putting those pieces together.
Now we'll open it up to anybody for announcements before we go on our way this morning. I have an announcement. Uh, I have gratitude for all of the uh, generous gifts that people brought last Sunday. We took a whole wagon load of uh, school supplies and food to the Beta Center. And they asked that we not send any more school supplies for this year. They have plenty in their uh, storage and they want to emphasize food from here on out. So if you've already bought any more school supplies, find a teacher or school near you and give it to them because uh, Beta Center wants us to emphasize food in our giving. The other thing I'm grateful for is I got to live 69 years with a woman that really believed what the pastor said today and was grateful all her life. Her spirit lives on. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling completely out of it because I was gone so long this summer. But if we're on a normal schedule, I haven't even looked. Do we have an executive committee meeting coming up? <laughs> Those of you who, who did that without me, did you schedule one? I'm not even sure, I'll have to take a look. So do be watching the emails from the office so as we get back on, on track with those kinds of things. I think I remember that we, that we called it off, that we didn't have anything okay. to meet about. Okay. But That's... we do have a board meeting coming up next week. Right. Okay. Watch your email. All right, thanks. And and Tom, I just have to tell you, one of the things I saw this summer as we were traveling the country, there's a town called Hattiesburg. And in Hattiesburg, there are murals all over. There's a whole public art walk. And one of the murals that's just stuck with me says, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. Well, <laughs> and that's what I was thinking about when you were speaking this morning. Wonderful. Very good, yeah. Uh -huh. I like that. Send that to me an email. I might include it in a banner or. And before Janet and Laura get away, I would like to talk to, to you two, if you can, if you can hang out. And uh, I'd like Mary and Sandy, you guys are together, aren't you? Uh, I want to talk to the two of you together, but I'll call you. Um, on whose phone should I call? Who's phone? Either one is fine. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards. I just wanted to be sure you stay together until I call. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're gonna be in. Well, I wish everyone a blessed week. Um, I'll be in the office if you need me or need have questions or anything. So uh, have a blessed week, and we'll see you in person next week at St. Paul's. Good luck, Frank, with all your treatments. Yes, absolutely. Hope you can be tap dancing real soon. <laughs>